for something different. Let's look at no dig flowers. I love growing flowers, ornamental plants for their beauty of color and form and fragrance. So I want to show you some examples here at Homemakers at this time of year when there's probably more than any other time in early summer, mid June. And no dig, so no dig flowers. It's like growing no dig vegetables, a simple mulch on the surface of compost where I'm putting maybe an inch a year, five centimeters, just a cover to feed the soil. And that gives lovely, strong, vibrant, healthy plants with great foliage and stunning blooms. Nature does it as well, just not quite so dramatically. So here we have grasses in flower and the elder bush and all this kind of thing. It's just this time of year and a lot of insects. So I'm going to point out a few of the cultivated flowers that I'm growing here. Um, mention why I grow them and, and some of their qualities, like for example, foxglove. It's really easy in this climate. Uh, it can even be perennial. This one's more biennial. You sow it one year and flower the next. One thing I do with the foxgloves is when they finish flowering, I cut out the stem with all the potential seed heads on because otherwise that will drop like a million seeds and you'll have foxgloves everywhere. And okay, may maybe that would sound really nice, but with all these things, moderation is definitely good. You, you just want a few. You can see there's not actually many foxgloves here just to get really good blooms. So if plants do go to seed like that and drop a lot of seed, um, you want to be in the spring hoeing or weeding selectively and just choose the strongest. Another example of that here is Alcamilla mollis. So beautiful feathery yellow blossom at this time of year. Um, by late summer that will all go brown. These will turn into seed heads. So before that happens too much, we cut the plant right to ground level. I'll take that to the compost heap, stop it seeding everywhere, or too many anyway. And then um, you'll get lovely healthy foliage for the rest of the year. And this one will pretty much grow in concrete. It's almost growing, doing that on the edge of the bed here. And then we have um, a standby favorite in this oceanic climate, geraniums of all kinds. And this one, I'm afraid I don't know the, the Latin name of. It's one I was given. Um, it's very reliable plant in terms of flowering all summer with these pretty flowers. And behind it is another nice perennial, commonly known as lamb's ears because of the gorgeous soft feathery leaves and that's actually flowering at the moment. The flowers are not obvious but they're much liked by bees. You nearly always see a lot of insects on lamb's ears at this time of year. And this is Hemorrhocallis which are uh, commonly known as daylily. So th that name comes from the fact that these flowers do only last a day, a lily of a day. They're not actually lilies, they're, they're of a different family um, Hemorrhocallis but they look like lilies, so that's where the name comes from, and they're very nice to eat as well as to um, admire. And finally here is this gorgeous rose, the Rest. It's a very old one. Nobody quite knows um, its origins. It's, it's such an old cultivar, and it's a, a shrub rose, so it doesn't ever get much bigger than that. If you want just one easy to look after rose in your garden, the <laughs> you could do worse. And this, this will flower for most of the summer, so you just need to keep taking out um, the finished buds like that they, and you've got little clusters where you get more coming after you keep removing the dead ones so that goes on for a long time and we can have a look at some more lovely things down here as well i find it amazing to look at this garden now because when i arrived here five and a half years ago this was a very wild and weedy and there were woody weeds as well like brambles and ivy. The ivy we pulled out, brambles I took a sharp spade to dig out the central clump. So there's a little bit of digging involved in no dig and for the rest of it it was pulling the perennial weeds that keep growing. Like for example I just noticed one that we missed last week. We go through these borders about once a week to just pull out any weeds. We see that there's, there's not a lot growing here now. The ground's pretty clean and the bindweed though has survived and on that rose I've just spotted actually quite a big stem or two of bindweed growing up it so I'll get in with a trowel underneath and leave out what I can of the root but you nev never really get rid of it but you just have to keep on top of it and not let it get strong again. Here is a flower which survived that initial mulching process it had a big 10 ton load of compost on it actually here 
and it's a peony. So peonies are great for early summer blooms and then they finish, they're just one month at the most, cut them down and they just sort of get leaves for the rest of the summer and flower again the following year, very perennial in this climate. And this is sea holly, which is a lovely flower because it comes much later in the year. It's really good to have a range of flowers at different times of year. Uh, it's very easy to fill your garden with flowers in early summer, but this one comes late summer, so July, August, September. And then these also make seeds rather like the foxgloves, so I'm always looking to remove the heads before they set and drop too many seeds. I mean, this one has self-sown there. Here's a gorgeous rose called Golden Celebration, which is particularly aromatic, so I'm getting a lovely, lovely waft of scent here. Uh, all roses have different qualities and have fun choosing one or two because you'll find one you know that suits your wishes in terms of size and colour and scent. Sweet lilies also have, sorry, sweet williams have a, a beautiful scent, so that's dianthus, and they uh, flower early summer from being sown the year before. So you can sow them about now, June, July, midsummer, plant them in the autumn and they flower the following spring. Although these are actually perennial because in our climate sometimes they survive the winter if it's not too cold. As do these salvias. That's salvia gemensis. And you can see the gorgeous and very fragrant little red flowers that really brighten up a garden. If you just have one of those and surrounded by green, it looks really nice. Along here I've planted some lavender and other flowers and they're all complementing the apple trees. So these apple trees are over five years old and they haven't got very big because they're on semi-dwarfing rootstock, that's M9. And we'll keep them to about that size now by pruning, certainly not taller than me, that makes it very manageable. And it also means because they're not so vigorous, you've got, we've extended the border a bit this way. We actually just put cardboard on the the grass and weeds and compost on top and then planted into that. Two years ago we started that here, planted lavender for example. And these sweet peas, which are annuals, the lavender is perennial. Sweet peas you have to sow every spring, so in this case sown March, planted April, fleeced over to stock rabbits eating them and then we keep picking, so you need to keep picking the blooms to encourage them to flower all summer and also water your plants, they love moisture sweet peas. And in terms of what you can grow under apples, we'll go over to the west side now and have a look there because you'll see some bigger apple trees with more flowers. Just on the way to the bigger apple trees, there's actually a little row here of pear and gauge and plum. Bigger trees, again, where I've underplanted with some different flowers I want to show you, uh, like sedum. So that's a perennial very long-lived and it just get bigger every year. Another perennial, probably the easiest one to show you, is this penstemon. Penstemons are just brilliant because they do just keep coming and they flower through the summer and into the late summer, even early autumn. So they give you a long period, again, into the end of the year when other flowers are less. And these I sowed actually last June from seed and they were planted here in July, early August, and they started flowering in September. So that's one way of doing it. Or you can divide the clumps in the spring and make new plants that way. So there's lots of ways of doing pensamons. Here's some pensamons that haven't actually started to flower yet. So there's many types. This is one, uh, a red lobelia, that's a perennial. And there's some self-sown annuals here, like poppies. So once you've got a poppy, and then if you ever allow them to seed, these are the seed heads. There's not ripe seeds in there yet, but once they ripen that, that goes brown and then that will drop like a million seeds and you'll have poppies forevermore. So maybe you just want to let one seed head go, but mostly I'm deadheading them. They don't last for long poppy flowers, but they do look very pretty. And two more flowers here I'd love to mention is the lickness there, rose campion as it's called sometimes. So that's um, that gorgeous deep colour which carries on for quite a bit of the summer if, if you've got the patience to deadhead it because there's lots and lots of them and then as each flower dies off it will make a viable seed head so you can end up with a lot of lickness but they are also perennials so again many options for keeping them going and here we have bulbs 
so that's something I haven't mentioned yet. You know, if you want quick flowers, they cost more money for sure. You buy bulbs. These are gladioli, so these will make those beautiful long stems towards the end of summer. And we pop them in. There's actually big gladioli and little gladioli. You can get gladioli of all different sizes according to the description on the bulb. So have a browse through a catalogue of bulbs if you fancy that. And yeah, let's go and see the apple trees as well now. These apple trees are on a more vigorous rootstock. They were planted at the same time as the ones we saw before. So this is MM106, which the rootstock, which is the bit down here, gives the tree more vigor. These guards, by the way, are to stop the rabbits gnawing the bark, which can ring bark the tree and kill it. And you can see how they're quite tall trees, but with enough space between, and apples don't make total shade, so you can really have fun with underplanting whatever you fancy. This is a nice easy one, which is Verbena bonariensis. Bonariensis, so that's a tall, elegant bloom which makes little mauve pom poms flowering through late summer into autumn. Also, prolifically self seeding, so we're often hoeing little seedlings from it just to have not too many. I've planted a few little annual lobelias there. The escalzia just self seeds here, and there's a tall lovage here which is just for ornament, really, um, not so much colour. And then on this side, we've got also some edibles like sea kale. So this can be eaten in spring as leaves, then it makes the flowering like broccoli. It's a brassica relative. So then you can cut these stems out once the flowering is finished. That goes to compost and you can see the new growth then coming at the base, which will feed the root for more harvest next spring. And just Recently I noticed growing here uh, a weed which you may recognise as actually a walnut tree. So that is from a walnut that was um, must have been buried there by a squirrel I think. And I've been pulling out quite a few because I don't want my garden turning into a walnut grove. So that's something to keep an eye out for. And then two other lovely things flowering here that are mainly going to be flowering very soon is dahlias. So dahlias with different colours, even different colour leaves. And some that I sowed as long ago as four years ago. We're not too cold here in the winter, down to say 20 Fahrenheit, minus five, six centigrade. Mulch of compost over the top protects the tubers from frost. And behind those tall, elegant spires are going to be very deep colours of hollyhock blooms. So hollyhock is a lovely perennial flower that actually um, Steph sowed a seed last spring, early summer, and I planted there late summer last year. It hasn't flowered yet, so that's the first hollyhock blooms that we're getting, and they should come back every year. And then, just to finish this video, let's have a look over the other side of my house and we'll see another border and how we use the flowers amongst the vegetables a bit as well. The area I'm walking through now, just over five years ago, this was a sea of mud and the builder had been driving over it, building the conservatory here in a very wet late winter, early spring. And I didn't do anything to the soil, just waited for it to dry out and that scattered compost on top, a bit of grass seed that made the, the lawn here. And then for the flower border, I put on extra compost. This had around 10, 12 centimeter, four or five inches of like well-rotted cow manure, good stuff on top of the what had been mud, but it was drying out soil basically. And it's made a really reliable and easy to maintain flower border over five years coming to sixth now. So some of these plants are quite old, like the echinacea there, for example, which flowers late summer. Some are quite new, like this mallow I planted only last uh, late summer. Uh, it's a bit more vigorous than I anticipated. I mean, mallow, malva is, is a kind of weed actually in terms of it's very easy to grow, uh, but much like by insects and very pretty. I've just been thinning it out a bit, in fact. Here we have a rose, which is an original survivor from Homemakers. And this one I'd like to mention because it's a bit unusual for being in a flower border. It's, it's, it's common meadow rue, Thelictrum. So it's of the Thelictrum family. There's actually a more elegant Thelictrum you can get, which is the purple one. 
uh, you'll see the name in the subtitle for that one. Uh, but this one's quite vigorous and easy to grow and has that beautiful mauvey sort of purpley almost leaf colour. So it just looks nice even before it starts to make these little yellow pom-poms or flowers. And also here I've been doing something with the soil which is mulching it a bit differently to elsewhere in the garden and this is a digestate it's called which is the byproduct of making methane so farmers who ferment anaerobically grass and silage in this case into methane so that's how the gas or it's produced the gas and that's the end result it's not really compost well it's not compost it's it but it's it's quite dry but it makes a very good um, surface mulch which when it rains will then hold the moisture and slowly feed soil life as well and we're having unusually dry weather here at the moment so it's a nice surface mulch to keep the last bit of moisture in there in fact I haven't watered anything here you can see it's all looking pretty healthy and finally let's have a quick look at the flowers growing in the main vegetable garden in the main vegetable area of homemakers garden I love to have a few flowers dotted around particularly at the ends it's very easy just to frame the end of a bed with some flowers like these violas which actually are perennial so they come back every spring they've been flowering away there since April and they're gone for a little bit more yet and actually then again like a lot of um, flowering plants once, it, once they finish flowering I'll cut them to the ground and they'll come back again rather than let them drop 10 million seeds and behind me there's an interesting one which is Primula candelabra very elegant there were four here originally and I put them here because they love shady moisture and this is the north side of the only two wooden sided beds I have on the, in the garden and uh, they've done it again this spring <laughs> look really nice so I'm using flowers as a way of increasing the diversity in the garden and increasing the beauty Flowers are just so much fun to play with and you, you've got that incredible choice of annuals and perennials, uh, different color shapes and forms. So have fun and you can increase your success with vegetables as well by having some flowers there.